This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Imagine you've trained a sport your entire life to compete in the Olympics. You step up to the plate and you go to do your performance and all of a sudden you've completely forgot how to do the sport. This is exactly what happened to Simone Biles. Amazing gymnast who everybody shit on. Simone Biles. Yeah, because she just bailed on the Olympics. We just found out, of course, that Simone Biles is not competing in any further part of this team final. I'm sorry. No, I love you guys. Um, yeah, to do something that I've done forever and just not be able to do it because of everything I've gone through is really crazy because I love this sport so much. I know the Twisty sounds like a cute, silly name, but it's actually a really scary thing. I had dark eyes for a few years. Being a mental coach for golf, I get many golfers contacting me each week about the chipping and putting yips. It's kind of hilarious and tragic <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the yips, dude. This phenomenon spans across nearly all sporting disciplines. It can literally end careers of top-level athletes. So what the hell's going on? The story of the yip starts with a golfer by the name of Tommy Armour. Tommy Armour, or otherwise known as the Silver Scott, won the French Amateur Championships in the 1920s. After rejoicing in that victory, he travelled all the way over to America. You see, Tommy was an excellent putter. That boy could put a ball in a hole. But in 1927, at the Shawnee Open, something happened to Tommy. Every time Tommy would go to take a putt, he just couldn't do it. Like, Tommy looked like he'd never played golf before. He was a renowned putter. This was second nature to him, and all of a sudden, he couldn't hit the ball. Tommy referred to what happened to him as the yips. But you see, after this moment, something bizarre started to happen. Other golfers were starting to experience the same thing. Sam Snead is widely regarded as one of the greatest golfers of all time. However, he also suffered from the yips, and he credits that to being the reason he never won the US Open. And Sam was asked this question in an interview, to which he says, you get to a point in your mind where you can't figure out how hard to hit the ball. And there were more golfers experiencing the yips. Ben Hogan, Harry Varden, all of who were suffering this mysterious condition that no one knew the reason for. Before we continue with this video, I wanna give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the number one platform for building and developing your own website. With tons of high quality templates to choose from, you can tailor them to perfectly fit what it is you do. Whether you're an artist trying to build out their portfolio, or maybe you run a little clothing store, Squarespace has got you covered. The platform itself is very intuitive, it's so easy to use, I could do it, and I'm not the most technically minded person. But Squarespace gets rid of all that technical jargon and leaves you to just deliver the message about your brand in the most creative and amazing looking way possible. Every time in past I've ever needed a website, I've always gone Squarespace. So be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant, and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. There's a drive up the middle. Hernandez in back of the bag. He's got him, Jackie Hernandez. From 1964 to 1972, Steve Blass was a dominant baseball pitcher and an all-star. However, in 1973, all of a sudden he had completely lost his abilities. He literally had such a bad season that he ended up retiring from the sport completely the following year. This condition that was previously just seen as a one-off was starting to be taken more serious. Steve Blass disease became a phrase used in baseball. You had Chuck Noblau and Steve Sachs, who had reported suddenly losing their ability to throw a ball to the first base. However, However, Steve Sachs' case was unique. Five-time All-Star participant, Steve Sachs. It was actually a conversation I had with my dad that helped me get over this thing. He said, you know, you, you can drive a car, right? I said, yeah, you can judge the distance back and forth. I said, yeah, and you can, you can speak clearly. Yeah. He said, well, you don't have a mental block. He says, you don't have anything like a mental block. He says, what you have is a temporary loss of confidence. You develop that way, your confidence will grow. You take that into the game. And it was the last words my dad ever gave me before he passed away the next day. And he showed me how to get over that thing in practice. It was just a loss of confidence. Once the confidence grew, things disappeared. And so as you can imagine, this had people wondering, was the yips a physical condition or just a psychological condition? The yips started to become widely known across other sports. In basketball, Markel Fultz and Chuck Hayes lost their free throw. In tennis, the yips tends to occur when people do serves. This affected Elmer Dementiva and Sarah Rani. Well, did you see this last night during the Grand Slam of darts? Barry Van Peer suffered what is known within the sport as dartitis. He found it difficult to actually let go of the darts 
at the Oki, and it was really, really uh, difficult viewing as in well. In darts, the Yips is known as Dartitis, with five-time world champion Eric Bosto being an example of someone with Dartitis. The game I love to play that used to be so easy to do, all of a sudden, I can't even throw a dart. In snooker, Stefan Hendry said that he lost a major title due to not being able to cue a ball, which he accredited to be in the Yips. Yeah. Are you announcing yeah. your retirement? Yeah, I'm officially retired now from tournament snooker. So you might be wondering, why was this all happening? Well, the sporting world came to a conclusion that surely this was some kind of performance anxiety. You know, with all the stress of high pressure tournaments. If you're in your last part and there's millions of dollars riding on you getting that ball in the hole, it's fair to say that that puts a lot of pressure on your mind and might make you scuff it. And so this was the dominant theory for a very long time. And cases like Sam Sachs's where he was able to overcome it kind of backed up this idea that maybe it was just in your head. However, this theory had a problem. There's a very similar condition called writer's dystonia, as well as musician dystonia, whereby these writers would experience this like involuntary movement in their hands. This seemed eerily similar to what was happening to some of these athletes. And like, if you think about it, writing is a pretty low pressure job. I mean, sure, if you haven't done your homework and it's due in tomorrow, there's a bit of pressure, but it's not the same as getting a match winning shot that's gonna win you a title. <laughs> Super quick, we just set up a new Jimmy the Giant Discord and Patreon so you can be part of this channel, help it grow. Back to the video. Dystonia is a medical term used to describe a range of movement disorders, whereby a part of your body might start contracting or spasming. These contractions or spasms may come and go, or they may be continuous, but there's like this distinct look of what happens. Their body will move in a specific, weird, awkward kind of way. But as you can imagine, in the world of sport where there's a lot of money riding on these athletes, it became pretty pertinent to work out what the hell was going on and to see if it could be treated. In steps Charles H. Adler. So the yips is a description given by people who golf of a twitch or jerk. A researcher from Mayo Clinic. Around the 2000s, more scientific research was being done into the yips. And there was a paper presented to the AAN annual meeting, which pointed to the yips being a kind of focal dystonia. From here, they continued to study specifically golfers. They would like wire these boys up like robots and measure how their bodies responded when they were doing these tasks. This research was groundbreaking. It threw a spanner in the work because it pointed to the yips not being a psychological condition, but actually a physical issue stemming from neurology. More research was done, and in the mid to late 2000s, Charles was back with a banger. They took 27 golfers, all of whom claiming to suffer with the yips, and made them do 10 putts each as normal with two hands and looking at the ball, and then with one hand whilst looking away from the ball. This study showed that five of the golfers had a very specific kind of jerky, twitchy motion, which would occur in over 50% of their putts. But then interestingly, nine of the other golfers didn't have the same kind of obvious jerky movement, but more so just a weird technique. Like they might push the ball or like their hands would maneuver weirdly. And so the researchers believe that those guys weren't suffering neurologically, but rather psychologically. It was all in their heads. So we now have a quantitative method, we believe, to compare those with a neurologic cause and those without, and actually find distinctions between the two of those groups. And the final 13 in the study actually showed no sign of yips the whole time. Seemingly, they just tagged along so they could get a free lunch and a game of golf. I'm kidding, obviously. What probably happens to those 13 is in high pressure moments in the sport, they choke. The weather conditions, the grades, oh. guys. Well, that's not what this study was even more interesting than the last. It showed that in 70% of cases of the yips, they were either caused or made worse by performance anxiety. But the other 30 was something different. It was neurological. The wiring in their brains had just gone a little awry. So if you're one of the unlucky buggers in that 30%, you might be wondering, is there a cure? Because for the 70%, it can seemingly be cured by working on their mental state. Talked about mindfulness as being, you know, as much as we pump iron and we run to build our strength up, we need to build our mental strength up. You had a bad call, things going wrong for you. You sit on the bench. You take a breath and you reseat yourself. We practiced mindfulness, is what you have to do. So you would literally have the guy sit in stillness? That's right. I find mental state such an interesting part of competitive sport. Simone Biles accredits what happened to her in the Olympics when she got the twisties being as a result of her mental health, ultimately leading to her having to pull out of the Olympics. And this had me thinking of something that happened very recently to me. 
You might not know this about me, but there's a sport that I play an ungodly amount of, which is badminton. I'm on a badminton. I don't play tennis, play badminton. The other week when I was playing, I was on a bit of a losing streak. And in the third game, it was 20 to 19. I was ahead, I was about to win the game. And as I see the shuttle fly up in the air, I run up and I jump. All I have to do is touch the shuttle and I'll win this point, it's an easy point. And as I'm getting closer and closer to the shuttle, I have a thought in my head. I tell myself this is a game winning shot. The moment that my racket connects, I hit the shuttle into the net, throw my racket and get very angry at myself. Leading me to lose that game. But you see, as annoying as this was, that moment clicked something in my brain. I personally often to miss easy shots in high pressure moments because I become overly aware of the value of that shot in that particular moment. Badminton is a very unique sport because if you miss the shot, you lose a point. Unlike football, if you miss a tackle or a shot, one of your teammates is probably gonna get it. It isn't the end of the world. Badminton is like juggling an egg. If you miss it, the egg cracks. So after this, I went into the next game and I had a new mentality. No matter what point of the game I'm at, in my head, it's nil-nil. And I don't just tell myself that as words, I actually have to feel it because the feeling of the beginning of a new game, there's no pressure, it's nil-nil. You know, it doesn't matter if you lose that point. This seemingly simple mental shift has changed my game about me completely. I'm now playing really well. And to bring this back to the yips, that is performance anxiety. When you miss those high pressure shots, it's because you overthink about it. You're so worried about how much it matters. For that 70% of people with the yips who are just going through psychological issues, they kind of prescribe mental exercises similar to what I just explained. The more you focus on the yips and how that's gonna make you feel, the more performance anxiety builds up. But what most golfers with the yips don't realize is that a lot of this performance anxiety can be avoided by simply not focusing on the yips before and during your rounds. But that's all well and good for the psychological yip sufferers, but what about them poor buggers with the neurological issue? Research is still being done, but there are some treatments. Sometimes just changing your grip on the putter or just mildly tweaking how you do the thing. This can help. Also specifically for golf, if you change your putter, it might have a different grip, a different handle, it feels different. But then in the more extreme cases, you can actually get Botox injections into your body. What this does is kind of like relax the muscles, stopping them from contracting so much and it might calm the yips. Honestly, it's kind of crazy how many careers have been completely destroyed by this condition, but it does look like we're sort of on the way to solving this phenomenon. So with that, all I can say is keep your hands steady, boys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.